Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. So in today's episode, I thought I would do something a little bit different. I'm not going to show any model stuff, I'm just going to do uh, a talk. Basically, I had this idea, what if I start a small series called Model Talk? Uh, and basically, the idea is not really to talk about... Um, specific models but ideas in modeling things are going on in the industry uh, maybe do some sort of type of Q&A so right away if, if you're not interested in listening to me talk go ahead and shut this video off I understand uh, but if you are interested in listening you don't have to watch um, you could just set your phone or device down do whatever you want to do and just listen uh, and see what you think about what I have to say um, the idea here is that I can get this type of video out fairly consistently, but uh, like the Titanic, I'm, I'm in the middle of my client's build right now, and I'm really trying hard to get this next section done so I could get a video up. I really wanted to get one up um, this weekend. I hope that that still happens, but it's just so much work. Also, you might have noticed uh, I sound a little groggy. Uh, I am under the weather. I've been fighting some stuff for a while now, so that's that's why I sound the way they do. So anyway, the idea is um, I want to talk about some different ideas and principles and modeling maybe, and then uh, you know, feel free to comment down below. If you'd like to send an email with a question, my email address is themidwestmodelshop at gmail.com. Fire off questions and maybe we'll do like a Q&A type of thing every week, couple weeks or so. Just something to get something out in between uh, models. This is something I can potentially do on the road. Um, I definitely easily can knock this out in between regular trips that I have to do for work. And I could get stuff out in between models uh, that take a lot longer to do. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I thought I would start off with something that um, I have talked to several people about and it's been a philosophy that I've uh, adopted all of these years because I have had people say like wow this you know your models turn out really good blah 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 how did um, you know you get to this level etc and of course there's some uh, smart people who've said right away well this is an individual who's been building models for a long time and that's what it takes and uh, it, that's sort of true so uh, what I want to do is share basically how I got into modeling when I was a younger kid, my dad had built a couple of model ships. I saw them. I thought they looked great. Huge model of the Cuddy Sark that looks just amazing. He did in college. And I grew up looking at that above uh, my bookshelf and in my bedroom. And then the later I discovered he had a little plastic model ship downstairs. It was like a half hull that you affixed to like a plaque and you put up. And I really wanted to build it. And my parents said no because I was little and they didn't want me messing with glue. But finally, um, they decided that since I was so persistent, Dad would build it with me. And I would, basically it was just me watching him build this thing so I could understand how it went. So we did this together. It was a fun little exercise and everything. And uh, then on one of my birthdays, my cousin bought me a model airplane. She bought me a 132nd scale F-117 by Ravel, skill level 3. I remember that. It was a big deal. Because they Ravel at the time, I don't know if they still do it now, but at the time it was skill levels 1, 2, and 3. 3 supposedly being the most difficult, advanced, and hardest. Uh, what I discovered right away is that's actually the easiest kits to build because they're the largest scale and the detail's simple and everything's easy to manage. The smaller the models, the more difficult it actually was. Anyway, uh, she gave it to me for, I think, my ninth or 10th birthday. I might have even been 8, I don't know. Uh, but she left me a note in there that said, um, here's your model, I know you can do it, which, which was just huge for me. Uh, my cousin is super successful and smart. She works for a company called Panduit. Maybe some of you have heard of them. Um, she had applied, she's a mechanical engineer. She does a lot of research now, and she had applied to Harvard uh, after high school not because she wanted to go to Harvard, she just wanted to see if she could get in. And, and she was accepted. They accepted her immediately and she did not go. She went to the University of Illinois instead uh, and got an engineering degree. So anyway, I get this model of the F-117 and I put it together, no trouble, and I had a blast. And that was the perfect starter model for me because the airplane's black 
and the whole thing is black. It was molded in black, but the wheel wells are supposed to be white and the landing gear was white and then the wheel hubs are white. So I had a, a small little bottle of t um, Model Master, or no, sorry, Tester's gloss white paint. And then I had the white paint brush from Tester's with the little black nubby bristles on it. I think you all know what I'm talking about. It comes with, came, came with all their little starter paint sets. And uh, I slopped my white paint on the black and was super proud and satisfied with myself. I had detailed it perfectly, of course. Uh, and those of you know that applying white paint to any surface is like the most difficult thing you could do, especially over black and not having primed or done anything. But anyway, I built this big model uh, and it turned out fine for my first model, uh, but I was super proud of it. And when I was building it, I knew that if I had gotten that white correct, on the landing gear and the hubs and everything that 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 would make the model so it was very important to me that i got that detail right and as i was building the rest of the airplane i kept thinking about okay i gotta paint this thing i gotta try and you know not get white on the rubber or the tires because that's wrong uh it should go in certain spots so fast forward a little bit uh, i i was hooked obviously and continue building models and my dad had a single action airbrush now i do not know the brand i just know that it was kind of expensive and he was a big time bass fisherman and would even make his own lures and the idea with the airbrush was to paint his own fishing lures and this airbrush it would spray as wide as a quarter and then you could dial it in to do like a pencil line and this was, I give my dad a lot of credit for this. He, he let a very small child have an airbrush and provide me with an air compressor. And I figured out how to thin paints and I'd monkey around with it and I would, I would get it going. And what I figured out early on was I enjoyed camouflage. I, I painted a lot of airplanes and a lot of cars and trucks and monster trucks. But when I really got into airplanes, I like airplanes. And... I started to notice that I wanted to place emphasis on certain elements of the build. So for example, uh, I had a little Spitfire model and I was like, this is a big deal because I can put green and brown spray paint on it. I have an airbrush now and I can do this camouflage pattern and it will look great. And so I set about building it and I, and I really was focused on that. And so that's the important thing I kind of wanted to point out here was that I was focused on just one element of the model, and that was applying this camouflage pattern. Now, I freehanded it, and it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. Uh, I did turn the spray down to like, I don't know, like an eighth or three eighths of an inch wide pattern. And my thought process as a small child was, hey, if this was the real thing, you know, a big air gun can only spray like one round foot at a time. So why would they be spraying much more than that? I should, I should paint like that. Um, it worked. I don't recommend it. It takes forever to build a model that way or paint a model that way, but it worked. There's other techniques now that are better. So what I did is I applied the green first. I was super satisfied, and then I came back with a brown because this is a Spitfire and, and painted that. Uh, and I learned a lesson right away that when free handing the paint, and, and my dad, he saw what I was doing. He was super proud. Thought it was fantastic. Um, when I was freehand airbrushing, what I didn't anticipate was that the brown would overspray onto the green that I'd already put down. So when I was done, I had an aircraft that had a brown hue to it, despite the green camouflage, and I did not like that look. So on the next kit that I got, I remembered that, and I think it was... Um, I think I just got another Hurricane or, a, or a, I got another Spitfire. I did it again, but this time I painted the brown first and then put the green on over the top, which of course had a slight green overspray, but it gave it the look that I wanted. I was super proud of that Spitfire. It sat up on my desk for a really long time uh, until inevitably my brother knocked it over and smashed it. But I was super proud of that airplane. Notice though that I didn't care about the rest of the build. I mean, I did, I painted everything, I tried to do a good job assembling it, but I really wanted to get that one thing right. And so I did, and it gave me the result that I was looking for. And I was, I had a great build. It only takes a lot, like a week to put these things together. And I enjoyed the process. 
So then I got a Tempest. Uh, they're not hurricanes. I think they're just called the Mark 6 Tempest or Mark 4 Tempest. I remember it's the Tempest Typhoon. I think that's the name of the airplane. The oh, big, huge four-bladed prop on the front with a big intake on the bottom underneath the propeller. This was a green and gray camouflage pattern. And then there was uh, the spinner. The hub for the spinner was blue. And I remember saying to myself, okay, I'm going to make sure I spray the gray first, put the green on top. That will give me the look that I want. Easy, I got it. But what I really wanted to do was put a gloss blue spinner on that airplane. I want everything else to look roughed up and banged up, but I wanted a perfectly gloss blue spinner applied. I built the airplane. I put the, the, the paint on the way I wanted, and I really spent a lot of time getting that gloss blue spinner just right. And it turned out uh, exactly as I had intended in my mind. And I was super satisfied with that. So that's the idea right there. Every build that I have ever done, really since that point, was I would pick one element of it and say, I'm going to get this right as best as I can. The whole rest of the model doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and put it together. I'm going to enjoy the process of gluing the pieces. Maybe I'll clean up some seam lines and do the things you're supposed to do. And you know, but I'm, and I'll apply the skills I had previously learned. But I'm really going to get this one thing right. What happened was I developed, uh, first of all, you speed up your building a little bit. Um, there's nothing wrong with those of you who take your time and build slow. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, I, I do think I, I want to do more. I want to experience more models than just one over the course of a few years. So um, my build speed moved up quite a bit. And then I would just enjoy the process of assembling them. I didn't stress over every single little detail. I would just take the principles and skills that I had learned last time and just apply them. I mean, they still work. And then on this, whatever this model is, I would, I would try to do something else correct. Uh, the P-51 Mustangs, the P-51D, several of them have the checkered pattern on the nose. Man, I could never get the decals to work right. So one day I decided I'm not going to do decals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint them on. And so I'm going to paint the checkered pattern. That did not work out. <laughs> so I went back on my next one to the decals to figure out how to make them work. And the rest of the build I just threw together. I don't even know if I painted the, the gray plastic aluminum. Or maybe I did. I, I don't know. It was a long time ago. But that was the, that's the idea. And so every build that I've done since I was 8, 9, 10 years old, I pick one thing that I really want to get right. And I don't care about the rest of the model. I just enjoy the process. And so I'd like to encourage all of you to try that. Uh, maybe on a shorter build, just you know, pick something out that you're like, I really want to get this paint chip process to look right. I really want to try this new technique out. Um, I really want to make sure this gloss and this area is perfect and the rest of them out, whatever. What I found is that you are enjoying the build more than you are uh, stressing about building it and worrying about trying to get something right. And you're, you're building a repertoire of skills. You do that you know, a dozen times a year you're going to start producing some very nice kits uh, and you're going to build up a skill set that um, other people are going to look at and say, hey, how, how did you do this? How did you figure this out? So anyway, that's, the, that's kind of my secret. That's to how I got to where I'm at anyway. I think I do a decent job with the models that I build and, and that's how I acquired that skill. And, and you can do it too. But the thing is, you have to have fun. This is supposed to be for enjoyment and to relax and just take it easy. So if you're building a model and you're not having fun and it's really bringing you down, don't work on it anymore. Don't do it. Do something else or build a different kit. Come back to it later if you feel like it. Uh, but, but, but generally speaking, you should be enjoying the process because if you're not, you know, then you're not relaxing, you're not having a good time, and it, it doesn't recharge your batteries and it's not a good thing. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's my idea there. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits here at this point. Um, if you'd like more videos like this, kind of as a filler in, please comment down below and say so. This is this is just an experiment. I realize that this might fall flat, and everyone here may hate this. People already don't like listening to me talk in some of my videos. So um, 
But yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd like to, uh, if feel free to make comments and send me um, an email if you want. If you have specific questions, or you can just put in the comment down below. I'll try and copy them all down, and and then maybe we can engage in some sort of dialogue in the principles of model building uh, in this genre that we all love so much. Anyway, that's it. I hope you're all well, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.